first chapter, if you like, of my career was all about, you know, being young. Um, never, being a woman never really crossed my mind that this would ever, that it would ever pose a challenge. It, for me, it was more around my naivety and my youth. <laughs> it's only in hindsight that I thought, blimey, I was actually a 23-year-old girl, really, um, leading, you know, big teams of kind of hairy geeks and engineers. I think the way I counted my, my youth and my gender was by being really well informed. So I would ask um, everyone that I knew as many questions as I possibly could about what they were doing and how they were doing it and you know, give me the intricacies of this particular technology. And whether I understood it or not uh, is another question. I maybe, may have blagged a little bit, but I listened and then oftentimes I repeated what they, what they told me. The second chapter of my career was, was when, uh, when I started a family. I was only the second woman in Google to be pregnant and the, the other lady was Susan Wachiki and she was one of the founders. So we were really setting a precedent. There was no... Um, uh, there was a real kind of maternity package in place. It was just, you know, your kind of standard statutory maternity package, which over here is really quite tight. So I think it was only three months. Um, but at the time, my career was, uh, you know, was really on, on the rise. So I was running Northern Europe and I was traveling around um, a lot, so more or less every week, working very, very long hours. Um, and then we started thinking about moving outside of London because we were living in the centre of Hoxton. So all of those kind of personal factors in, a, in your life started to play into my, into my profession, to my career. Um, and even in my later stages of pregnancy, it became evident that I wasn't going to be able to do what I was doing before. And, and that, was a, that was not a nice thought because I had worked so hard, so over 12 years to get to where I got, and I was really at the pinnacle. Um, and that did make me panic, um, without a shadow of a doubt. So I kind of felt that I had had to keep the momentum going. Um, and I was, you know, massively pregnant. I think I, I worked into my final days, if not over my due date, I hate to say. Um, and then kind of had my, had my, first, uh, my first child, Josie. And I went back to work within three months, um, which again, in hindsight, was probably not the best thing to do. These things don't come with a guidebook. Um, and again, I felt that I had to work at the pace I did before, which, uh, which again is, you know, impossible. There was a tr tremendous amount um, of guilt and also, you know, anxiety. Um, the times that I had to come in to work late um, and leave work early, I felt like I was missing out. Um, so, you know, they were, they were very, very stressful and anxious periods um, of, of my working life. Now, be because of that anxiety, both Susan and I implemented um, a better maternity package, more support for working mums, that kind of feel that that was a legacy. When I encounter um, a woman in a leadership role that has a young family, I always ask them, how did you do it? How did you find it? Um, and, you know, from, from many sectors and walks of life. And the interesting response, which is, which is I think is a kind of universal response, um, and I'm talking about women in the top of their fields, is they say, you know, no, first of all, no one gives you a handbook. There's no guide to this. But the ones, the women that have found it, um, I think the, the easiest are the ones that have got a supportive partner. Mentorship has to come from the mentor. Um, and I think the most effective mentorship programs come from within companies. And they're started really by you know, two women saying, one saying, I need help, and the other saying, I can help you. Women are represented, I think, reasonably well um, in roles such as you know, marketing and PR and you know, commercial and sales and operations, the usual, but, but they still very much are lacking in engineering and product. Um, and they're such valuable roles. Um, and when I ask myself why, I look at my own experience as a, as a mother with my daughter. You know, she, uh, I encouraged her to 
to take a coding class and she loved it. She loved the creativity. She loved that she could she could write something that be that became alive. And, but after a year or so, she uh, she asked if she could leave the class because she was the only girl. Um, and not only did she feel, I think, pressure from her friends for going because they were going to other things. I hate to say it, but things like dance and netball. But she felt pressure from the boys in the class because she didn't fit in. Um, so, you know, that, that, was, that was just tragic to me. Um, and you know, the same can be applied for boys as, as well, right? They're, they're, they're equally put into these awful stereotypes um, that we force them to be in. Um, and I think, you know, if I look at, if quotas are implemented, um, at, you know, at board level and across, you know, specific roles um, and responsibilities, then we need to look at implementing them a lot earlier on. Um, and we need to start educating our kids in, in you know, more of an, of an equal way if we're to see women rise up through the ranks. Um, so if I, again, I, if I look at, you know, girls and who they, who they identify with, it's important for girls and boys to feel that they belong to, to a tribe and that a tribe will have, you know, characteristics that they identify with Girls, it's still around beauty and makeup and fashion. That's never going to change. Um, but they will, they will identify with, you know, the Kardashians. <laughs> now they may be successful businessmen, but that's, I don't think that's that's ever really reinforced. It's more how they look, how they're portrayed, who they're married to, what babies they've had. You know, we don't talk about how fierce they are as businesswomen, how educated they are, you know, how clever they've been at, you know, rising to the top of a very kind of like, you know, male-dominated world in media. We never, I don't, we never applaud that. Um, if they were men, we would. Um, so I think, um, you know, there is a responsibility, and it comes back to the media, you know, and I, it's, I hate to say, but, you know, it's the media's responsibility to ensure that we are reinforcing and we're pushing forward um, smart females from a young age. My advice to women would be: uh, don't don't miss out on having a family. Have a family as quickly as possible. Don't put it off because it gets harder as you get older. Get back to work as quickly as possible, but just. You know, it's really important that they have a, that women have a support network around them, both from their employers, you know, and and at home. Um, and I think employers have to be just more sensitive that you know employing parents means that there has to be some kind of leeway, leeway in how they work and when they work with school holidays and everything else. You know, otherwise, I think there is a massive there is a there is a section of our society of well-educated, well-qualified women that give it up um, after they have children, and I think that's such a shame. The decade that we're in at the moment is is making the most progress, I think, for a very long time. Uh, and I hope that we can continue with that momentum.